This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can find all the cards in this video in their store by using the links in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I usually rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. However, sometimes I like to take a look at cards from a different angle, and that's what we're doing today, with a look at the most expensive black commons in Magic. We won't just be looking at the prices, though. I'll also explain what exactly makes these cards so expensive. Common is the lowest rarity in Magic, so many of them are very, very cheap, but that's not true of all commons. If a common is in small enough supply or in high enough demand, or some combination of both, it can still end up being pretty expensive, especially for a common. The prices that appear in this video are the near mint card kingdom prices for the printing of the card that has the lowest price. In other words, they are the lowest price you could pay to get some version of each of these cards. Additionally, we're not looking at promotional or foil versions of cards, just their base versions. As usual, each set can only occupy one slot on the list, so if more than one card from a set would have made the list, I'll talk about them together. All right, without further ado, let's dive into the list. At number 10, it's Bubbling Muck, which costs about $4.50. For one black mana, this sorcery makes it so that for the remainder of your turn, a player tapping a swamp for mana produces an additional black mana. That's right, this is basically a black high tide. If you're a mono black deck with lots of swamps, you can generate some insane mana with this. You do have to keep in mind it's symmetrical, so if there's another mono black player around, you might end up helping them too. Unlike High Tide, though, Bubbling Muck hasn't seen play in 60 card formats. High Tide's a lot better because it's an instant and just because it's blue. There are lots of effects that untap lands in blue and lots of card draw that can keep the chain going. Black isn't nearly as good at either of those things. Still, while Muck hasn't done much in 60 card formats, it is a relevant card in Commander. Mana multipliers always fare better there than in other formats, since games generally tend to be longer and you have the time to get a board state where you can really go off. And if you're playing an expensive Commander, Bubbling Muck can even help you get it into play earlier. So, while there's only demand for Bubbling Muck in Commander, and it isn't even completely insane demand, the fact that there is only a single printing of it from a quarter century ago means that the card's limited supply is being stretched to its limit. At number 9, it's Darkness, which costs about $5. We just saw a black high tide, now we're looking at a black fog. For one black mana, this instant prevents all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Fogs aren't the kind of card you slot into just any deck, as going down a card to prevent damage is often just delaying the inevitable. However, if you're playing a combo deck, buying yourself that one more turn against a creature deck is often enough to let you go off. So it should come as no surprise that those are exactly the kinds of decks that Darkness has been played in. In Modern, it's been used in Ad Nauseam decks, which look to get Phyrexian Unlife in play and draw the entire library and win the game. And in Popper, a format where only commons are legal, it's played in Reaping the Song decks, which look to combine Reaping the Graves and Song of the Damned with cards that you can cycle for one mana. Basically, you cycle away a bunch of cards like Horror of the Broken Lands, then cast Song of the Damned, get your storm count up, and then cast Reaping the Graves to get them all back. Once you do that, you can win the game with a big horror or ping them to death with Draneth Stinger. Darkness gives the deck more time to set up for their big turn. Darkness is also played in around 20,000 decks in EDH rec, which isn't an insane number, but it's nothing to sneeze at either. It's been reprinted a few times since making its debut in 1994's Legends, but never in a set with a massive supply. It got a reprint in Magic's very first bonus sheet, Time Spiral's Time Shifted sheet, and more recently it was printed in the Warhammer 40k set. While there are certainly more Darknesses out there now than there used to be, they're still pretty hard to find. At number 8, it's Rat Colony, which costs about $5.50. As an owner of pet rats, I'm always happy when a rat card makes a list. Anyway, for one generic and a black, it's a 2-1 that gets plus 1, plus 0 for each other rat you control, and the next line of text is what plays a huge role in this being so expensive. It's one of those cards that you can have any number of in your deck. This even counts in a singleton format like Commander. While Rat Colony hasn't done anything in 60 card formats, people love playing Commander decks with this kind of creature because it lets you break one of the core rules of the format. Thanks to the printing of more recent Rat Commanders like Ashcoat and Kerumonix, who both pay you off in a big way for going wide with Rat Colonies, this card is in a really good spot right now. And because if you're going the Rat Colony route, you're going to need a ton of them, this makes the demand for the colony incredibly high, despite the fact that it's only in 14,600 decks on EDH Rec. This is because 14,000 decks worth of rat colonies is comparable to the demand of a card that appears in 420,000 decks in EDH rec. 
Since its original printing in 2018's Dominaria, Rat Colony has only received a reprint from The List, which is a far cry from being a typical reprint. In short, there just aren't enough Rat Colonies out there to satisfy Commander players. At number 7, it's Exhum, which costs about $6. This sorcery lets each player reanimate a creature from their graveyard. This is one of the most efficient reanimation spells of all time, and while the fact that it's symmetrical helps balance it out to some degree, the decks that look to abuse Exhum are basically always going to have the better target, and if you can cast Exhum in the extreme early game, your opponent probably isn't getting anything back. It has an impressive history in Magic 60 card formats, first breaking into the format in Extended in 2001, and ever since then it's been consistently played. While Extended got retired in 2011, Exum has continued to see heavy play in both Legacy and Popper, where it's simply one of the best ways to reanimate your Atroxa or Troll of Kaza Doom. Exum also sees some play in Commander, although it is significantly harder to abuse in that format. This is both because decks are significantly less consistent and because to really abuse Exhum, you now need all of your opponents to not have anything to get back. So most of the time when it's played in Commander, it's more of a group hug card that it's fun to play because it can benefit everyone. Still, it has extremely high demand in both Popper and Legacy, and as you can probably guess, the card is in short supply. Its original printing in 1998 is the only time it got a printing in a regular set, as since then it's appeared in box sets, dual decks, premium deck series, and Jumpstart. At number 6, it's Creeping Bloodsucker, which costs about $6.50. For one generic in a black, it's a 1-2, and at the beginning of your upkeep it does 1 damage to each opponent, and you gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. This is a pretty solid return on an investment of 2 mana, as if it's left unchecked it can drastically increase the gap between your life total and your opponent's. The Bloodsucker doesn't see any play in 60 card formats because it's only ever been legal in super powerful 60 card formats like Legacy Vintage and Popper, and that's because its only printing is from Jumpstart 2022. However, being a somewhat rare common would not be enough on its own for this common to command this price tag. It would also need to have some significant demand, and it does, of course, in Commander. While the Bloodsucker's upkeep trigger is pretty good in two-player games, it's amazing in Commander, where you lower the life total of three opponents and gain three life every upkeep. Life gain is one of the most popular Commander themes, so it's no surprise that you can find this hard-to-find common in more than 40,000 decks in EDH rec. It can be particularly potent with Commanders that give you triggers for gaining life, like Karlov or Vito. Creeping Bloodsucker's demand has further increased because it also works well in decks that like it when opponents lose life, like Rakdos Lord of Riots and Obnixilis. So yeah, the Bloodsucker is from a single set that had a limited print run, and there are two fairly prominent commander themes where Creeping Bloodsucker is pretty much a must-have. At number 5, it's Sinkhole, which costs about $7. One of the best land destruction spells ever printed, it's a sorcery that costs 2 black mana to destroy a land. If you're on the play and you manage to destroy your opponent's land on turn 2, they have very little hope of ever bouncing back, and with fast mana you might be able to do it if you're on the draw too. It found some success in competitive 60 card formats in Magic's earliest days, and it's long made appearances in legacy pox decks, which are all about denying the opponent various resources including lands. However, it would be a stretch to claim that Sinkhole is a heavily played card in any 60 card format right now, and it was only briefly a heavily played card in Magic's earliest days. Demand for Sinkhole would be really high in Popper, of course, but it's banned there, which I think you're probably happy for if you play that format. It's also not in significant demand in Commander, where it appears in only a little over 1,000 decks in all of EDA Trek. Land destruction that only goes after a single land is kind of sketchy in Commander because you have so many opponents that going after only one player's mana base and only destroying one land at a time just doesn't do enough. So all of that means that Sinkhole only has some very light demand in both Legacy and Commander. This is a case where a card's rarity plays the biggest role in its price tag. Sinkhole was of course originally printed in Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited, but since then the only set it's been printed in is Eternal Masters, a limited print run set and it was also printed at rare. It did make it significantly easier to obtain Sinkhole than it had been when the only way you could get it was to get one from Magic's very first set, or if you could get your hands on something like a Judge promo. Before that Eternal Masters reprint, Sinkhole would have easily been number one on this list, so it made a difference, but it's still not a card that you're going to find very many copies of. If demand for the card ever goes up, something that isn't impossible, Sinkhole's price is going to go even higher. 
At number four, it's Snuff Out, which costs about 850. For three generic and a black, it's an instant that destroys target non-black creature and it can't be regenerated. That's not a great removal spell, but you can also cast it for no mana at all. If you have a swamp, you can just pay four life instead of the casting cost. That's not a very big hurdle for a removal spell that you can cast even when you're entirely tapped out. Basically, Snuff Out was Phyrexian mana before Phyrexian mana. It saw some play in aggressive black decks and extended in the late 90s and early 2000s, where getting a blocker out of the way for free was a great way to keep pressure on the opponent. More recently, and more relevantly for its price these days, it sees very heavy play right now in Popper Legacy and Vintage. In Legacy, it's most recently been played in Death Shadow decks, where Snuff Out is particularly spicy since it lets you get a blocker out of the way while also growing your shadow. In Vintage, it sees play in a wider variety of decks, mostly as a sideboard card. Popper is where it's done the most, though. There, it is simply one of the best removal spells in the format. It's the 19th most heavily played card in Popper over the last four months. On top of all of that, it's also fairly heavily played in EDH. All of that results in Snuff Out having a ton of demand, and the supply isn't especially plentiful. Mercadian Mask is the only time it's received a reprint in a regular set. Since then, it's been reprinted in a couple of different dual decks, and most recently in Doctor Who. The Doctor Who printing has lowered Snuff Out's price significantly. Back in 2022, it was $13, which was good enough to make the list on the most expensive commons in the entire game. But while the price has dropped, it is still one of the most expensive black commons ever printed, and the demand for the card isn't going to drop anytime soon. At number three, it's Culling the Weak, which cost about $12. For one black mana, it's an instant, and as an additional cost to cast it, you have to sacrifice a creature, and in return, you get four black mana. That's right, this ritual effect is more potent than Dark Ritual, even if it does require a bit of setup. Culling the Week only has a single printing from 1998's Exodus, meaning it is in very short supply. The fact this only has a single printing is kind of problematic for gameplay reasons too. It has the now defunct Mana Source type, and the card's text box might make some players think you can sacrifice as many creatures as you want and get four black mana per sacrifice, since it's templated the way that activated abilities are today, not as an additional cost to cast the card. So this needs to get a reprint somewhere, just so players are less confused by the card. Anyway, it's never done much in 60 card formats, but of all the cards we've seen so far, it's the most heavily played in Commander, appearing in more than 72,000 decks in EDA Trek. Rituals and Sacrifice Outlets are both cards that can easily find a home in Commander, and Calling the Weak is both. At number two, it's another ritual, Cabal Ritual, which costs about $13. For one generic and a black, it gives you three black mana, but if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, it gives you back five black mana instead. And unlike Culling the Weak, it doesn't require you to give up a creature to get the boost. Cabal Ritual has long seen play in Storm decks, first in Extended and later in Legacy and Vintage. These decks look to produce tons of mana and draw lots of cards to get a high Storm count, then cast a card with Storm like Tendrils of Agony, which will be lethal if you've cast enough spells during your turn. Obviously, Cabal Ritual is the kind of card that can really get you there, since if you're casting lots of cheap spells to get your Storm count up, you're going to get Threshold pretty easily, so it's often generating 5 mana in those decks, which goes a long way towards getting your Storm count high enough to win the game. It's also the most heavily played Commander card on the list, appearing in more than 5% of all black decks on EDA Trek. So, there's some pretty incredible demand for Cabal Ritual, and supply just can't keep up. This is because the only regular printing of the card is from 22 years ago. It did get a reprint in a From the Vault set, but these were effectively the precursor to Secret Layers, so it isn't like they contributed meaningfully to lowering the card's price. In fact, the From the Vault version of Cabal Ritual costs twice as much as the one from Torment. And at number one, I've got the two most expensive black commons from Portal 3 Kingdoms, Zodiac Rat, which costs about $18, and Zodiac Snake, which costs about $5.50. That's right, I get to talk about two rats on this list. Anyway, neither of these cards is especially good. Zodiac Rat is one black mana for a 1-1 with Swamp Walk, and Zodiac Snake is three mana for a 2-2 with Swamp Walk. Yeah, neither of those are especially inspired designs, are they? As a result of their unimpressive power level, there's not any real demand for these cards in Commander or 60 card formats, but as is often the case with Portal 3 Kingdoms, the only reason these are expensive is because they are super rare. Portal 3 Kingdoms is a unique set, it was intended as an introductory product for new players in Asian markets, and at first it was even treated as a separate game from Magic. It was just supposed to be a simplified on-ramp for players to get into the game. The set came out in 1999, but it didn't officially become part of the Magic canon until 2005. 
Anyway, there just aren't very many Portal 3 Kingdoms cards out there, regardless of rarity, so while only collectors are interested in these cards, that kind of demand is plenty for these Zodiac creatures, which are in very short supply and have never been reprinted. It also doesn't hurt that these two cards, like all of the cards in the set Zodiac Cycle, have some pretty awesome art. That likely plays a role in collectors being more interested in them. I'm pretty happy that Zodiac Rat is so much more expensive than Zodiac Snake, too. So, those are the most expensive black commons in Magic. If you want to own any of these not-so-common commons, check out the description where you can find a Direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in the video. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe, and if you want to catch up on past videos, including many more that look at the most expensive cards in specific categories, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.